I'll go from working in the office one day to being on site meetings or client meetings, even going to CPD lectures. And so I might not even get to the office some days. For instance, today I met a client who was uh, interested in discussing various aspects about his scheme. Um, we tend to get a lot of people into the office and it's fascinating just to meet the wide variety of people who work in the construction industry. Well, actually, my parents both did a lot of renovation when I was growing up, so I kind of grew up on building sites. And when I was about in my teenage years, my mum was renovating a farmhouse and being more involved in that made me realise I was really interested. My first passion really is design. Um, that was my stepping stone into architecture. I undertook art, uh, design technology, graphics at A level. Um, and I think that really primed me for my architectural career. Yeah, actually my careers tutor and my head of year tried to dissuade me from studying architecture. They didn't feel it would be a right fit for me. Um, on retrospect, I think that there wasn't a lot of people studying architecture at the time and there just wasn't enough known about the industry. Um, but once I got to university, all the tutors were really supportive, so I was really glad I stuck to my guns. Trident work experience proved to be a fantastic avenue to uh, undertake my career. Uh, the, the practice is still running today and it was fascinating at the time just to see the realities of architecture in practice. I pretty much, once I decided I wanted to do this, I was pretty determined and went for it all the way through, even when I was dissuaded slightly. I think I was in year 10 at La Rocchia, and after taking Trident, um, I didn't change my mind and uh, I was dedicated to that path. I did my degree and postgraduate diploma as well as my masters at Portsmouth University. I am currently undertaking a part three. Uh, architecture is fairly unique in the way that it's built up. Um, it's, I took what's called the traditional route into architecture, which is broken into three sections. Uh, part one is typically three years and with some years out in between. Uh, part two is two years and I'm currently, as I've said, taking part three. And in between those breaks, you come to the office and you work full time and build up practical experience. Well, I chose maths, physics, design technology and English, but actually I wish I hadn't. It was my biggest regret because no, being in the university and seeing what the acceptable courses were, you don't have to study those core subjects. Those are the kind of atypical ones. For GCSE, I undertook design technology um, as a key focus, um, art, um, I also undertook history as one of my elective, um, which was useful in various random ways, but that was good nonetheless. Uh, for A-levels it was more direct, it was art, design technology, I took biology and chemistry because I think you need a kind of strong theoretical backbone, a kind of, a kind of rigour that, you know, that assists any person wanting to be an architect. Well design flair is obviously a given, you're designing all day. Um, but then you need teamwork because you're working with your colleagues or with contractors, engineers and builders. So, you know, it's really important to be able to work together and give an end product. That's really great. Design talent, social awareness and an attitude for business. Probably the flexibility and the fact that every day is different. I couldn't do a nine to five desk job, although that is quite a big portion of what you do. But that and, and seeing a building finish, having that idea in your head, the design that you work on with the client, and it's just a drawing, something that you've brought out of nothing, and then one day it's reality and it's an actual space. That's really exciting, that's a little bit of magic. I think it's highly rewarding and it's nice that architecture has one foot in an office, so you have that conventional lifestyle there. And also you're, in a strange sense, uh, a kind of artist because you're working on commissions effectively. I'm really surprised there's not more women in the industry actually. I think because of the flexibility and the design flair of it and quite practical thinking, I'd have thought it'd be perfect for women and I'm really surprised that there aren't more of us in the profession. I would say the sheer volumes of paperwork. Um, it's very admin heavy, um, often can bog you down and become a the amount of time you spend designing isn't what you first think it might be. 
but nonetheless you you know you realize quickly that it's all very important and it facilitates architecture and it wouldn't work without it I think there's a big preconception that it's a boys club and that was definitely something I thought it would be like but I've never experienced it myself we're such a collaborative group of people you have to work together so I've, I've never found anything but respect and enthusiasm on site it's a highly technical job and so if you come in just believing it's going to be all art based it isn't the case you, you really have to you know, read up constantly and understand new technologies coming out. Um, probably this project. This was my first project when I set up my business and it's coming to completion now and it's the biggest project that we've done as a practice. So seeing it finished and to such a high standard is really exciting and something I'm very proud of. In general, it's working for some private clients who to be non-specific is you know, fantastic and they really appreciate everything you do for them and when you commit a, a good scheme to paper and you, know, you actually see it built on site it's satisfying, massively satisfying. You might have to do all-nighters to get a project done because you're working to a deadline but at the same time the following day you might get the day off so the flexibility does make it a lot easier but sometimes you do have to work quite late hours in order to get work done to a deadline. Um, the average qualification time span from commencing at university to end is 10 years, um, or just under nine and a half, I believe. And that definitely follows suit with me. I'm about nine and a half at the moment. I haven't qualified. Uh, but I would say you can break it up into parts, and that makes it more manageable. Setting up my practice was probably the biggest challenge. Um, being quite a young person, I'm the youngest um, practice owner here in Jersey. As I've already mentioned, um, I'm undertaking part three and doing that whilst working full time in an office is very tricky because you've got obviously your workloads here and then you go home and you work at home. I've actually been given two pieces of advice. One was from my dad who said that if you found something you love, do it because he's in his 60s and he still doesn't know what he wants to do when he grows up. And also from my mum who said that if you're stressed out and you're feeling under pressure, get up early because those hours before the phone starts ringing are the most productive you have all day. I would say it's just to follow your passion really and um, just simply to do what you're interested in. The ability to in the summer maybe work from 7.30 until 4, as long as I get the work done I can finish early and have the afternoon off. I would say a deep appreciation for the kind of team effort that occurs behind the scenes in architecture. Um, Craftsmen, tradesmen in general, um, they work very hard and um, it really sheds light on the work, the work they do day to day. I've done quite a lot of travel. I've worked in Australia and I've done travel with my university, gone to Italy and France and some people even went to New York. I would say it's interesting here at BDK where we uh, bring in quite a few Trident students and they undertake a similar project that I undertook when I was a Trident student and it's just nice to see their passion and energy and it really helps everyone in the office to feed off that. I think it's that moment when you're coming near the end of completion on a project and you just get that sneaky peek at your clients faces and you know that they're really happy with what you've done. It's that that bit of joy that you've given them and that this is then going to be their home. That's really magic.